you, um, you grew up around here, right? Grew up on St. Claude Avenue. That's close by, isn't it? Yeah. And um, went to school at LSU. I did. And uh, what was your, when did you graduate from? from Finance. Ah, uh, that helped, huh? Nothing to do with the music. So how did you get into this business, promoting concerts and doing voodoo? Um, just created it. You know, grew up in the, the back end of the quarter and loved music and had a passion for it. And you know, had every Led Zeppelin album on vinyl surrounding my bed. And, you know, my entire bed and the living in my bedroom was surrounded by records and you know, more of a fan perspective. So we started a company that is more of a hired gun. We produce technically for a bunch of larger corporations. So the, the event that you mentioned, the Revlon Run Walk, every year we shut down Times Square between 42nd Street and 59th on 7th and Broadway, which is unheard of. We're the only people that are allowed to shut down Times Square and it's a 12-hour, literally a military operation, you know, because everything's linear. So all the trucks have to be perfectly aligned. And you know, the next morning, 50,000 people show up for this race. And every, you know, every year at 6:30 in the morning, every billboard in Times Square goes dark, and it comes back up on our satellite feed. And it's just like the only time of the year that you have Times Square. It's just one big, gigantic visual. So. We do more stuff like that, and then voodoo, particularly, you know, it's sort of an anomaly in this day and age that, you know, one person owns a music festival and is dumb enough to actually do a music festival and take the risk that we take with this event. So, so how do you go about getting clients like like the Revlon Run Walk thing? How does that happen? Um, was it your interest that caused that, or is it their interest that they hire you? Well, we started a business here. The business actually started in New Orleans with uh, three tours. They were interactive tours, and quite honestly, I think that was probably the best way to learn the business because we had no resources, and they were very interactive and like insanely intense productions, which was, uh, the first one was an event called Planet Hoops. And the way that I started the company was working in New York for a production company and um, the final four was in New Orleans and you know Planet Hoops name is now sort of dated and you know old school but when it came out it was you know uh, pre-Planet Hollywood and Planet Reebok and all the crap that came mm -hmm. after it um, so essentially launched the company by talking the mayor into giving us I, I walked in and asked for uh, Decatur Street in the French Quarter to put up all of these basketball courts. We can do like a thousand basketball courts and have a three on three tournament. And uh, he threw me out the office and then I went <laughs> back and got the uh, convention center and uh, the warehouse area. And essentially took the site between the hotels and the Superdome and then took that to Adidas and to Miller and to all the sponsors. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge success and we took it on the road and created a football version of it called In the Zone and a volleyball version called Spike and then other companies just started hiring us. That's incredible. So you just, uh, I mean, that worked out for you, that Planet Hoops thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it really did. So it must be easier now dealing with, uh, with the logistics and the agents and all that. I mean, they take your calls, they don't hang up on you, they don't curse at you and scream anymore. Well, they still curse and scream a lot. There's probably a few of them on my phone right now, cursing and screaming. But um, they do take the phone calls. Well, that's good. They also take the checks. <laughs> do you see yourself staying in the business? Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I don't know. Bigger and better? I think Voodoo will, you know, the, the goal of Voodoo has always been you know, to be around for 30 years and have the economic impact that Jazz Fest has on the city. You know, I think a lot of things have changed over the last year and, you know, we need to see how this year goes and see how the city goes and what political structure happens in the city and what's the environment. But we plan on, you know, obviously we did a, we came back and did a free show 60 days after last year and we came back this year with what I think is an incredible lineup. So, but this is your biggest one, though, right? This is your. This is going to be the biggest festival of them all, right? Of all the voodoo fests that you've done. 
I think it will be, yeah. And you do, it's not your only major event. In fact, the Revlon event would probably be bigger, right? The Revlon event is a much more insane production. I mean, this we have two weeks in the park that we can go build and, you know, once it gets out there, they're two very different environments. You know, the Revlon event is literally 12 speakers, you know, three <coughs> bands, and we're coordinating all the talent and the production, and, you know, it's a whole different beast. You know, we just finished a tour, the La Maximo tour, uh, which is a 12 city Latin tour. Hmm. Um, and we've got the Road to Voodoo going on right now, so. 42 events in 53 days. Really? Wow. That's a lot of work. You need any help? Yeah. <laughs> so go to the website and Call sign me. up, right? 